Hey everybody, welcome to therevitkid.com. Today is a quick and simple tutorial, but I've gotten a lot of emails and questions about how to do this over the years, so it's about time I finally do it, or show you how to do it, I should say. So what it is, is um, what we're going to do today is we're actually going to align a Revit camera view with a photograph and sort of my method of doing this. Um, so here's the original photo that we're going to try to align. This is actually the existing house um, and there's an addition that we're putting on this house um, and just an example of what you can do once you align it is something like this which is kind of a cool image um, and this is just taking a simple hidden line view um, and throwing it onto the site aligning it um, aligning the view exporting an image and then in Photoshop we're combining to make something like this so pretty cool um, you can see there's some value in doing this and so what we need is a reference image and our Revit model so here's our Revit model so what you can see here is this is actually the existing house on the left hand side. This is the addition. And what we're going to do is it's pretty simple. Um, there's only a few steps. Um, the hardest part is actually trying to get the, the camera perspectives to, to work correctly. Um, as you know, if, or if you don't know, um, you know, the camera angles and perspectives has a lot, have a lot to do with the focal length, which is a little harder to change and adjust to in Revit, but we can get pretty close and then use Photoshop to clean it up. So I've got my model, I've got my reference view. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna create a camera view. And for that camera view, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try my best to get the, the view as close to that photo as I can before even matching it. So if I go um, to my reference image here, which is right here, you'll notice I'm sort of down the hill looking up at the house on this sort of southeast corner. So if I'm looking at the model, I'm actually down here somewhere. So I'm just gonna to go to my first floor plan actually, just cause it's easier to place these in a, in a floor plan view. I'm gonna to go to view, 3D view and camera. And now I'm just gonna simply click somewhere down on the corner here and point my camera towards the house. It doesn't need to be perfect, we can fix it afterwards. So now here's my view. So what you'll notice is that um, it's not that much like the reference. So if I pull up, here's one reference, here's another reference few different references sorry um, so you can see we can try and use this perspective and, and, and get us as close as we can so the way I do that in Revit is I use the steering wheel for those of you not familiar with the steering wheel or the navigation wheel I guess it's on the right hand side um, if you click it it pulls up this little navigation wheel which follows your mouse so what's nice about this is you can click look and if you hold you're actually able to move your camera um, you can go up and down so this is perfect we can go down because we know we're a little lower and then the walk is also really nice. So if you click walk, what that does is it allows you to move back and forth. Another little trick for those of you not familiar with the navigation wheel, if you click and hold look, it lets you look around. But as you're looking around, if you use your arrow keys on your keyboard, you're actually able to walk. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm actually gonna pull myself backwards using this, this setup. And I'm gonna try and get myself as close as I can in the, to the perspective that we're looking at. So again, I'm just holding look, and then I'm using my arrow keys. And as you can see, we're getting pretty close there. I think that's a good start. So there's a good start there. So now we've got ourselves a view that's called 3D view one, or three, sorry. Um, we could rename it if we want. And now we need to bring in our reference image. So this is the key here. Um, because you're in a 3D view, you can't actually, if you go to insert, you notice you can't actually insert an image. So what you need to do is use a little workaround that I figured out, which is actually creating a sheet. Because in a sheet, you can place an image and a view, and you can you view them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to sheets, I'm going to say new sheet, and I'm just going to do none for my title block, because this is just a reference for us to get the view set up. We don't really need a title block. So I'm going to click none and click OK. Now I'm going to bring in my image. So I'm going to go under insert image. I'm going to go find that reference image, which is right here. And click open. I'm going to place this. For right now, I'm not going to care, care about the scale of the image. I'm just, I'm just going to place it. So you need to place the image first, because then what you're going to do is you're actually going to drag your 3D view on top of the image. Now you notice the scale is a little off. So there's two options here. Either you can scale down the, um, the image to meet the view, or you can scale up the view to meet the image. I'm going to scale up the view to meet the image and then try and 
um, adjust the image a little bit just because I know by default if I get into this view for Revit, so I just right click and said activate view. I'm gonna select my crop region and click size crop. Um, it's only six inches by four and a half, so it's not really a big image to begin with. So let's, let's scale the proportions and let's go up to 24 inches. So now it's 24 by 18. So now you can see we're getting a little closer. So now that I've got that a little bigger, I'll actually get out of this view. I'm gonna click deactivate view and I'm actually going to scale down my image now. You can see I'm actually getting pretty close as far as the uh, perspective is concerned, which is pretty cool. Okay, so now it's not perfect yet. I mean, uh, if I wasn't doing a tutorial, I'd sit here for a little while and make it perfect. But so now the key here is if I activate my view, I want to go hidden line or um, wireframe. I apologize. WF on the keyboard um, will get you to wireframe. And it's going to be a little hard for you guys to see, but you can actually start seeing edges and you can see your, your image and your um, um, your model in, in line with each other. And then from here, I'm going to pull out my navigation wheel and I'm actually going to use that using the look tool, just like I showed you guys before, to try my best to match the perspective. With this type of image, it may actually make sense to do a hidden line view instead. Sometimes it makes sense to do wireframe, but here, as you can see, um, I can see these edges, and it's kind of it's kind of manipulating itself pretty nicely. So I'm just I'm just gonna sort of move around. What I notice here is that the perspective is kind of flared out a little bit. That could be because um, the image was taken a little lower. And there we go. As I start looking up, you'll notice that the perspective is getting a little better. And again, you want it close, but it doesn't have to be perfect. What you're gonna do afterwards is we're gonna modify it a little in um, in Photoshop. So if I type wireframe, that's looking pretty good. Uh, the perspective, uh, the horizontal perspective, as you can see here, a little bit off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to see what's gonna get that closer. So all I'm using is look and pan on that navigation wheel to try and get this thing as close as I can. That's looking a little bit better. Let me go to hidden line now. There we go. So now these edges right here are looking a little closer. I know it's gonna be a little hard to see, but when you guys do it uh, on your computers, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna flip over to hidden line. You can see now I've got a, a view that's um, pretty close to the perspective that I want. Another little tip is um, if, you, if you match your view region with your image, it helps when you're aligning things in Photoshop. It'll actually come in and, and pop in really easily. So there we go there. Okay, so now we've got ourselves an image. So now I've set some, some graphic display options on this to, to add some shading and so on and so forth. If you're interested in my settings, um, feel free to check out some of my video series. Um, if you head over to bimafterdark.com, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But um, what I've done is I've set up uh, some shading and the view's ready to export. So now I'm actually gonna go back to my 3D view three, which is my actual view. I'm gonna go file, export, images and animations, images. I'm gonna set this to something like 5,000 pixels. If you really want, you can check out your original image and see um, see how that uh, aligns if you wanna make it exact. Um, so now I'm just gonna export this. So I'm just exporting this one view as an image. I'm going to hop over to Photoshop where I have my reference image open already. I'm gonna take that hidden line export and you'll notice because I um, because I adjusted my my regions to equal the image, it comes in almost exactly where I want it to, which is pretty cool. And then I can just do some straight up photoshopping. So I can do things like adding an alpha mask. So I'm just going to add a quick alpha mask. Um, I'm going to get rid of the sky. So if I just paint, oops, if I just do a little selection here, and then I paint the sky black. You can see there I'm getting rid of the sky. And then I'm just going to paint a little black marker here and start getting rid of it. And you can see now we can start combining things. And so that this is a whole other lesson on Photoshop, but I think you get the idea and I hope this helps you guys. Um, if you're trying to align images and overlap things in Revit um, with actual photographs, this is, it's not a perfect method, but um, I could tell you right now it's going to get you a lot closer than whatever you're doing right now. So hope that helps and I'll talk to you guys later.